Mike, this frightens me to say, but it's been just about 40 years since I got my PhD in brain science. And uh, the last four decades have created enormous breakthroughs and new ways of understanding, some of which you've pioneered. So right. if you look at some of it, what, what, what are some of the highlights uh, of during this period of time? Well, there's been a tremendous revolution in a sense. I mean, and most, most of our increased understanding is on the level of detail of process. But also there's been a dramatic increase of our understanding as a brain as an operating machine. And that largely comes through the explosion of studies in, in waking, behaving monkeys and it, by an explosion of experiments in humans mm. in which we basically track the brain in operation, we record from the brain in operation in, in many, many ways, and we manipulate it in many ways that, that inform us about the nature of the processes, the rules of the process that govern those operations. Because, and by those experiments, we come closer and closer to really understanding it as an operating machine. What are some examples of that? Well... Uh, we now understand, we can act now actually op, op, control the brain in, you could say, mental actions, or in actions in which we're controlling relatively sophisticated movement. We can also track the brain as it changes as new ability is acquired, as an animal acquires an ability or a human acquires an ability. The brain is an incredibly adaptive organ. It basically is remodeling itself in detail continuously throughout life. And one of the greatest advances in our understanding of it, and this is really fr largely from studies conducted over the last decade, the last 15 years maybe, mm. is our appreciation of the processes, the mechanisms, the rules that govern this incredible capacity to change our brains, to change the brain as a function of how it's engaged. Now, what are some of the changes that, that occurs? Uh, we know that brain is made up of, what, 100 billion neurons, is that the... Oh, cast. that's way underestimated. Oh, okay. Right. No, no, no. We're, we're, uh, that, 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 we, the primary changes occur in the effectiveness of connections between neurons. Right, right. And the process is magical. The process is a process of input selection by which we strengthen all of those connections basically that provide, that lead to a reward for the brain or that contribute to the brain's, to, uh, to the brain's own positive judgment that a try in a developing behavior or skill it's a good one. The brain basically creates models of behavior, and it then uses those models and evaluates them try by try, and it changes, strengthens all of those specific connections that contribute to a better and better and better try. And that's the basis of us mastering skill after skill, ability after ability. As our brain evolves as a functionally, functional machine, as a controlling machine, an incredible elaboration of our behavior throughout our life. It's through this magical process of simply strengthening all of those connections that lead to a behavior that the brain itself is seeking. Can you differentiate between strengthening uh, connections that are already there versus making new connections? Well, both things occur. It pops up new connections, but the, but the main thing it does is strengthen existing connections, mm -hmm. and the changes are massive. You know, if you look at if you look at an animal in a behavior that's equivalent in a human to learning to use a simple tool like a child learning to, to use a spoon. Mm -hmm. you, you actually see changes in the brain of an animal like a monkey that occur in 14 or 15 or 16 different cortical areas. And the changes... Just from in learning the, how to use a spoon. Yeah, and changes are, are occurring actually in the selective response properties that relate to that behavior, to different aspects of that behavior, in millions, hundreds of millions of neurons. Mm -hmm. And this is re sure. reflecting changes that are occurring in billions of synapses. Mm -hmm. And those changes... Gradually, the machine specializes for all of the, to meet all of the specific requirements in sensory, the quality of sensory feedback that's coming from the hand, arm, from the body, from the eyes, and so forth, that are controlling this relatively simple operation. Seems relatively simple, but actually, the changes that occur in the brain are massive. And it would be over billions of synapses, which the the the, the uh, space between neurons, how they communicate together. Absolutely, and 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 the basis of that change is magical. It's simple. Everything that contributes to a little better try that leads to a, to a reward. In the case of using a spoon, for example, the reward comes when the food is dumped to the mouth. The food is inherently rewarding. Mm -hmm. But the brain, is, the brain of the child is also evaluating the behavior. It knows what a good try is like, what it's like. And it's, it's also, in a sense, registering the quality of the try in, in more complicated, sophisticated terms. And then it's rewarding itself. It's saying, 
save those, save just those connections, strengthen just those connections that contribute to the better tribe. Now, the, and, and by that process, ultimately comes perfection, mastery. Now, the, the organism knows w when it works, because it gets a reward, but, but how does that knowing then literally make a connection stronger? What is well, the process? It, it basically releases neurotransmitters that are related to, that are, that are, that are triggered, a release is triggered by its evaluation that the attempt has been a good one. And so it's a saying the attempt against a model that, that it carries. But it's also being, it's also releasing these neurotransmitters. They're ca called modulatory neurotransmitters that you could say represent save it switches. They throw switches in the brain, you could say. They release chemicals. And the chemicals basically carry what is a temporary change that comes from the action of the tribe and, and makes those changes permanent by strengthening the specific connections, the myriad of specific connections that have contributed at every level in the brain to that better attempt. And those modulating neurotransmitters, are, are they from the same neurons or different? No, 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 no. They're special, right. they're special, you could call it learning machinery or control machinery that has evolved early in the history of brains that basically is regulating learning. It's a wonderful thing because the brain is actually controlling its own change. The brain is actually evaluating when change is beneficial to it, mm. to itself. Mm. And it's allowing enduring change only when it's beneficial, only when it's leading to a result that it's seeking. So it's an amazing characteristic of the brain. And really, it's an incredibly powerful resource that we all have, that we all carry around within our skulls. I mean, we learn, we drive change in our brain that account for a, the, the, a, a, a sort of a limited repertoire of the skills of, and abilities that represent a history of the evolution of our species mm -hmm. since it arrived on the planet, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, in every one of us, in an incredibly beautiful, idiosyncratic way, in every lifetime. And, and so all of us have all that capability of billions of years of evolution that we express. Well, we, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a very thin rule that we get. I mean, we, from, you could say from all of the development of human culture, each one of us gets only a very, very narrow slice. But, but actually, we carry the benefits of the history of culture and, and, and how it's filtered and crystallized to this point in the development of human societies. And, and, and through the course of our early life, our childhood, our young adulthood, we largely, we, we develop a specific uh, set of skills and abilities that represent a very co incredibly complex combination of things that have evolved in our culture from prior time. And if you think about it, many of those things, a large proportion of those things, are of relatively recent origin. You know, the cave woman didn't have to worry too much about higher mathematics. Mm -hmm. You know, it took 20,000 years 30,000 years before we could make even a crude knife. It took 60,000 years to figure out how to make a sharp one. It's not really, it took us, you know, it was maybe 15,000 years ago before we figured out how to pile stones in a wall to make a corner of a house, right, of a building. You know, this, these are hard won advances. But, but cumulatively, we are advan we take advantage of all of them because of the incredible adaptability of this amazingly powerful self-organizing machine. And then, in the last 150 years, it, it becomes exponential. Oh, uh, yeah. Because you're building. It's out of that, control. But, that, but that, that's more of a cultural thing than, than a brain thing. But the brain is... Oh, it is a brain thing, because the brain basically is required to keep up on, on, on a certain level. Mm -hmm. And it always comes at expenses. I mean, we, we continually change how we're specialized to adapt in our environments. But, of course, we can't adapt to every every possible contingency that comes from our prior history and then add on the incredibly powerfully and rapidly changing things that come from the current era. What a challenge it is to even this incredibly powerful adaptive organ, our brain. Right? Can you uh, look uh, 50 or 100 years into the future about what you, you might speculate we would know well, at that point, considering the, the amount of progress made over the last 10, 15 years? It's, 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 it's unimaginable, I think almost unimaginable. And I... I really believe that it's, we've, we've basically created a kind of trap for ourselves because this development is so undisciplined from the point of view of a consideration of its neurological consequences. The brains of a contemporary person are very different from a person 100 years ago and dra dramatically different from a person 1,000 years ago. I mean, we spend most of our time now doing things that a person 1,000 years ago was, was beyond the, the possibility, beyond the skill. Right. The, 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 the abilities of the average person a thousand years ago. I mean, and we're evolving very, very, very rapidly in, a, in an undisciplined way. Anything goes. 
and we're, we're loading our brains with all kinds of, dare I say, crap, <laughs> you know, in modern society. It's a consequence, and no one really knows the consequence. No one really knows how this is going to contribute, is contributing to the evolution of society, for good, for ill. I think, in a sense, it's sort of a dangerous time from the point of view of how we're evolving and the, and the lack of control, whether we're really up to controlling the process. Uh, maybe didn't evolve quite far enough before we let loose the lion.